Would you ever said, consider moving to Kenya with your family? I am praying for the time when my husband and I will eventually see eye to eye on this matter. Any suggestions? Oh boy. Was wondering why you haven't adopted any children. Hey guys, how are you? We are traveling today and I thought it'd be a great time to do a little Q&A um, that I try to do most Tuesdays and this time I have Solo with me so it's not Ask Sarah, it's Ask Sarah and Solo. Hopefully the car is not too loud. We're going back to a very loud house so believe me, this is quieter than the house. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I have an email ask sarah at rtribemini.com today you're getting asked sarah and solo but you can send your emails to that if you want to ask a question that i answer on tuesdays i am very very behind i'm answering questions still for me so if you have patience also feel free to record yourself asking the question with your phone turned like this send it to me on that email i would really love that and that makes it just even more fun, but I'll still answer them if they're just written. So Jen said, I love watching your channel. We're a multicultural family. My husband is Zambian and I'm American. We have five children, four born in the States. One was orphaned that we adopted in Zambia. We lived the first 11 years of our marriage in the States and have spent the last nine in Zambia starting a church. Having our kids live full time and experience both of their cultures has been such a blessing. Would you ever said, consider moving to Kenya with your family. First of all, that's really exciting that you guys are in Zambia, Lusaka. I used to love the Zambian football team when I was a kid. <laughs> I thought they were the best laid back team in Africa. But anyway, um, um, I'm not looking at the camera because I got to focus on the road. <laughs> but uh, yes, of course, we would love to. Um, if the opportunity ar arose, it was the right thing move for us, I, I, I think there'll be zero hesitation. Um, like you guys planting a church there or pastoring a church there, you know how the calling goes. You know until you, you don't leave until you're told to, to leave. And so we haven't had that release from the Lord, but um, as far as our desire, yes, it will not be a uh, something we would hesitate uh, to do. We love both of our cultures very much so. Yeah. I thought we'd live most of our life in Africa somewhere, so. Yeah, I thought. Although I would disagree that there wouldn't be, be no hesitation because I think now that a lot of time has passed. Yeah. Our children. Are becoming more established, the older yeah, ones. Yeah, like over the next number of years they'll start establishing their lives here and then it would get harder to live on I the agree. other side of the world. I agree with that too. Um, yeah. But I think we will always make sure we go often because we love Kenya. Oh, I do love that your kids have had so many years in each culture. Um, our kids are obviously getting way more of the American culture than they are of the Kenyan, but we do try to get them there as often as we can and spend as long as we can because that is important to us. It's just challenging. Okay, the next question is from Mindy. Was wondering why you haven't adopted any children. As someone who is knowledgeable about children living in orphanages and things they go through, why not adopt? No judgment, adoption takes a special heart. Not everyone is suited to adopt. But your family certainly seems suited for it. I, as an adoptee and, for, and as someone who adopted my daughter from China, the foster care system here in the US is so horrible, I cannot imagine having been put in that situation when I was born. My daughter was in an orphanage for a year as an infant, and while she's a thriving 22-year-old now, I cannot imagine what she would have become having not been adopted. I'm just curious as to why some people have big families but don't adopt. Again, not judging, just sincerely asking. I have a biological son, and I can honestly say I love them exactly the same. Thanks, Mindy. We actually looked at adopting before we even had children. We've looked into several situations and they have not gone through and for whatever reason i definitely have always had a heart to adopt and the lord has blessed us with a lot of children but we every situation we've looked into it just has not worked out we would love to even do foster care but in our state we're not allowed to because of how many children are in our house and with a lot of young children uh, it just makes it interesting because um we're cautious about 
uh, how do I say this, adopting in age order at this stage of our lives with having so many young children. So we would want some, a child if we were adopting that was younger than our children. But just like the question about living overseas, the Lord has really not opened the door and we have, it's not like we're waiting for a child to be dropped at our doorstep. We have knocked on a number of doors. So um, it may be something that happens in the future. I personally believe that the, the Christian church as a whole, that we are called to orphans. I mean, the Bible says that the orphans and the widows and that like you said not everybody is in the right situation to adopt or has the heart for it but I think we can all do something and so we really try to do something even in a season where we're not able to adopt ourselves I, I personally hope that that is in our future one day but it it might not be but we try to do as much as we can to help kids in that in situations in orphanages like you mentioned different situations like that as much as we can we've even worked with aged out youth in the foster care system in our city um, obviously we go, our family has an orphanage overseas and we try to help them in any way we can so do you have any comments on that well no I was just thinking about like when we when we had six kids um, there were uh, three kids that were set of uh, three uh, siblings group and they wanted to keep them together and there was a uh, they needed a foster home with possible adoption going there, but uh, we were turned down by our state because we had six children at the time, you know? Things don't, don't always work out when you try to do it, you know, so. I understand why a lot of the laws are in place, why they are because of abuse that's happened in the system. However, I also have strong feelings about how a lot of large families are capable and already set up to take in more children because they're used to like, a big group of children and yeah. parenting and whatever but you know it is what it is we have to live in the system that we have so the next one I'm reading from I think it's Sophia and she said I love your channel it's so nice to watch family friendly content on YouTube my kids are two four and six and they enjoy watching your ducks oh I'm so glad because sometimes I'm like am I showing the ducks too much <laughs> That's because you like them. I'm showing it for those they're, three kids. Cute to it. They <laughs> are do. funny to watch. They are fun. I yeah. love showing them. They really do make me happy. I was trying to tell my grandparents recently how much my birds make me happy just watching them. Okay. And then your grandpa says, oh, the ducks, it tastes so good. I agree with you, grandpa. <laughs> that is exactly what he said. I ate really good duck in Paris. Shout out to the French people. They are the best They duck. know how to do They that. know how to do it. <laughs> okay, let me get back to the question. Okay. My question for you is, how would you suggest that I encourage my husband to consider going down to one income and letting me stay home? Currently, both my husband and I are RNs, and as our kids are getting older, my desire to stay home with them is growing. Financially, we have debt, house, cars, student loans, but I feel that me being home outweighs all of the financial burden. I am praying for the time when my husband and I will eventually see eye to eye on this matter. Any suggestions? Oh, boy. First of all, I agree with you that if there's ever a possibility, it's your desire and there's ever a possibility to be home with your kids, then it's worth every sacrifice that there is. Okay, so that's, I wanna encourage you that is the right desire because I'm just amazed. Some, there's one, one, consistent advice Sarah and I heard from people that were older than us when we were just starting to have kids and it's always stuck with me you know when when you, when you talk to people from different cultures I'm going all around to give you answer your question <laughs> but just stick with me for a second hey, hey you know when you, this is a it was a consistent statement that was made that was made by different people, different cultures, different times when we're starting to have kids. With people that were older than us, they said, enjoy this time. It goes by fast. And I mark those words very keenly because um, all these generations, they say the same thing. And now we are at the place where we're seeing, we know we have little kids, but we also have older ones now. And it's gone by fast. So. Let me go back to your specific question. So that's right. I think, I, 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 one, you guys need to be on the same page about it. And what I'm hearing right now is that you might have, 
you might need to talk to somebody I'm, I'm very tempted to say DM me <laughs> just to help because I've helped many families just look at, take a second look at their finances and make a way to see if these ways they can plan better to make it work there would be some sacrifice but sometimes you might get a planner that might be able to help you and give you a truck where for a number of years you could adjust the way your lifestyle a little bit or plan better with your finances to make it happen we did the same thing and um, he was younger we were younger but there were some sacrifices but it also was tremendously rewarding yeah. key thing though you need to be on the same page if you guys are believers uh, something you need to pray about together be on the same page and you might be surprised how when you start walking through the doors uh, towards your goals how many other doors open up that you didn't did not exist until one is shut i don't know your exact situation um but i would say a few things to consider is uh, well does your husband see you happy being home because he might think that you know it won't be very fulfilling fulfilling or uh it, it, uh, there might be strife that he notices or anything like that and just a consideration another uh, is that um, are you willing to make the sacrifices like for me I would live in a tiny apartment if it meant that I could stay home versus leaving my kids for working all day um, so are you willing to make any sacrifices we went with one car for years and if i needed the car that day i would take solo to work and i'd pick him up with all the kids load them all up um, otherwise i would stay home i also learned how to be very frugal in a lot of things so that we could go down to one income i stretch myself to find ways to work from home um, to bring in a little extra income that would help and so i think if you're willing to do your part too that's just another thing to consider so yeah so solo said he uh, we're gonna save your email he said he'd be willing if your husband's interested um, to help you write a financial plan that might help you meet your goals because he literally has helped so many families do that so um, we'll just email you back and see how that goes all right there's another one that I lost it so I don't have your exact name but um, <laughs> You asked about if we would let our kids live in a college dorm because you really enjoyed your college life experience and wondered what we would think about letting our kids if they wanted to have that college life experience. So do you want to answer that? <laughs> sure. Well, neither Sarah and I or I did that. So it wouldn't be like something like, oh, wow, I want my kid to have the same experience I did. Mm -hmm. um, for me, like I think, if they are going to school in the same city that we live in, I would discourage them from doing that. Just from a financial decision, uh, I want them to kind of save that money uh, by being able to stay at home and save the money and stuff. If they're really wanting to be independent, then I would be encouraging them to buy a house, helping them with, come up with a down payment and invest more. So I guess I think of it financially, uh, I think you can still, they can still have the same social life um, through, you know, uh, if they live in the same city as we do. If they are living, it, if they're going to college at a different uh, town or a different city, makes it would make sense to me. From yeah. the other one, I, I will highly discourage any of my children uh, to do that. I they, could see them maybe like if they're older college age wanting to move in with friends, but a dorm experience is kind of different you know yeah um but yeah that financial aspect is is big and then you know some of the some of the college life is a party life too <laughs> so i don't know our ch our child our oldest judah he has spent the last year he's been on campus all the time he's involved in a bunch of campus ministries and doing he's made so many friends he really is living a college life Right. He had, did this last year um, without having to live there and saving a lot of money. And so I guess we see that. So Sylvia said, I have a five month old baby girl. She's our first. And we are pretty sure we do not want any more. We have enjoyed the newborn phase. We have not, excuse me, we have not enjoyed the newborn phase. And I did not enjoy pregnancy at all, largely because of gestational diabetes. What are your thoughts on only children versus children with siblings? And also, 
what was a newborn phase with your first like compared to your second? Okay, so Sylvia's from New Zealand. That's awesome. It's good to hear from you, Sylvia. My yeah. thoughts. <laughs> Little Kiwi. Yeah. <laughs> all Blacks. Rugby team. They beat my Kenyan team all the time. So, but I like New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my thoughts. Okay, obviously I have a lot of children and I see a lot of sibling relationships and they are incredible. We we were just talking last night about how much our kids get along in different phases. Of course we have different ones that don't get along at certain times, whatever. For the most part, they have so many friends. I love the sibling relationship. I can't speak to being an only child. I was not an only child. You were not an only child. I could tell you this. I don't like pregnancies at all, and I've been pregnant a lot of times. Pregnancy is not my favorite. It has gotten easier the more I've had. I realize I have a different perspective in it. Age also probably brings a different perspective to them, and you realize that this is gonna pass. I personally love the newborn phase, but I know I have a lot of friends and family that tell me they do not at all. I think every woman is just so different, and those are really, really challenging things like pregnancy, newborn, labor, all of that is very, very challenging. It's challenging on your body. It is really a sacrifice for our children. Um, but the way I think about it personally is the long term. And so even, even though I love the newborn phase, the, that five month old stage, I would never make a decision, permanent decision about children when I had a baby that in that stage because it is still so intense and a lot of work yeah. when they're young children. So I like to think in the long term, like the long game is that these children could be grandparents themselves one day, like it's generations to come. And one day you have grown children with their own children that they're bringing home. And there's nothing that we do in this life that is worth a lot of value that is not hard. And so I, had pregnancies where literally a doctor told me if you have another baby you will die and I had another baby and I did not die <laughs> I mean like I had I had a lot of experience with babies when I had my first one but I've seen so many friends like it's night and day when they hadn't had a lot of a baby newborn experience the first to the second was huge I think the third one is even more kind of more because you have more experience first on your new one Everything is a change and it's never easy. Everything is learning. Yeah, everything is learning. Even learning your own style. Miles, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, but, um, yeah, but anyway, second is different. That's true, and you're even learning even your own more. style. That mm -hmm. That is such a good point, mm -hmm. but yeah and you know, nobody else can tell you what to do, certainly. We're not here to do that, but from our perspective, um, just one rough experience, like it's normal for it to be rough and it doesn't mean the next time will be rough either so yeah that's our perspective let me tell you a story that really had an impact on me um as as a pastor there's a time i had uh, i did uh, funeral services for two different families um there were older people that had passed away naturally and um one had eight children and the other one had two children it was very interesting because those funerals were only like three or four weeks apart. It was such a stark contrast for me to see the legacy and of the family of the one that had two children and the one that had eight. And it was just remarkable just to see um, the generations, because at that time there was four generations represented. And uh, I was like, wow, that is something money cannot buy. You know yeah. that legacy. They, when they had the grandchildren, the children had grandchildren and great grandchildren. They were all. It was just remarkable and beautiful to behold. And uh, and I'm sure looking at those grandparents or great grandparents at that time didn't see any regret in the ones that had a lot of kids. That oh boy, I wish I, I met people who said who told me I wish we had more. I wish we had not made a permanent decision early. And I'm yet to meet people that says, I regret having as many as I did later on in life. Yeah. So. I'm sure they're out there, but we do hear that a yeah, lot. Yeah, I hear one more. A lot. And the other one, I, I just personally have never heard it. Yeah. But I'm sure, yeah, like you said, I'm sure there are people who do. Yeah. But um, it's not something you hear all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that's our thoughts for what they're worth. I mean, that that, sec that second funeral, or the, the one with a lot of kids, there's just a lot of support and family camaraderie, and like everybody had somebody. And Yeah, and just, the stories that were coming, it was just a different, it was a celebration of life, and, uh, it, it, uh, and it was just, it brought a different kind of joy in a sad time, but that was just really remarkable to see. Yeah. Uh, it was almost therapeutic <laughs> to just uh, see the children and the grandchildren and great-grandchildren, even when they're making remarks about their grandpa. Uh, yeah. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just very encouraging for people. So anyway, I, I, it was just an interesting observation for me uh, to have been involved in those two uh, services that were real close to each other. And I thought, wow, um, really your greatest um, uh, legacy is the children that you raise. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll leave it at that. Thank you for listening. And drop your question in our inbox if you have one. And we will talk to you soon. Bye. See you guys.